Hello guys and welcome to another replay analysis with me, your host, Vibe. Yeah, that's it's me, huh? I know I changed my hair color. That's it's uh it's blonde. I don't know the last time I did one of these, but it's still me. And today we're doing a replay analysis of Mr. Muffin. The Muffin Maestro, to be exact. And he's playing against a Protoss player. And Muffin Maestro I didn't pay attention to what league you were, but just out of curiosity, if in the chat, if you wouldn't mind telling me what league you are, so I can get an idea, I'm going to start this bad boy up, or if anyone was paying attention, we have a, uh, he's diamond two, okay, there you go, boom, we got a nice diamond level Zerg versus Protoss, I'm going to go to Muffin Maestro's vision, but not perspective, rather perspective, not vision, what do you, Pfizer, you guys know what I'm talking about, I'm going to use my vision, but from what he sees. Let's see what he's doing, okay? Let's see what he's doing. How long is this? 18, okay. This will be in here for three hours. Very nice timing in the last game. I'm assuming that Caesarian won the last game. Okay, first things first. Muffin Maestro, first things first. I recommend, it's Diamond 3, 4K MMR. Okay, so it's a Diamond 3 level game. First things first, Muffin Maestro, I would recommend going for a 16 hatch, which means you make a dr make two drones up to 16, and you pull one of your drones off the mineral line at 190. If you want to do it perfectly, take a drone near the edge of the mineral line towards your expansion, so it would be up here, not down here. So take a drone off here, one of these sides. If it's the close patch, make sure you fix it with another drone somewhere else quickly after you pull it off. But pull it off at like 190. At 16 supply, 190 minerals. And if you do that, you will have about th roughly on every single map. Every map has like maybe a tad bit of difference, but it's very slight. But you will have 300 minerals. You did a 17 hatch this game. Do a 16 hatch. <clears throat> every oh, you are, you, Okay, well, you did a 17 hatch this game. Just do a 16 hatch in general. Make sure you always know that. Because on most maps, if a probe builds a pylon and then comes to your base... You can actually get the hatch down before the probe blocks it. If you do, if the probe immediately runs to your base right away, and it's one of the first 12, you won't ever be able to block it no matter what, unless you were to go for like a 14 hatch, but that sucks ass. Um, but yeah, just make sure you always do that. Uh, this was a 17 hatch this game. Okay, sorry, don't be sorry. It's okay. No worries, dude. Just make, I'm just making sure you know that. If you, if you know anything that I say, that's fucking right on, dude. Then you know. You, then you know... All right, so we got an 18 pool after a 17 hatch. I sometimes I fuck it up too, though. I always do like I, I, I do weird shit all the time. Okay, and you um, you ran a drone over. I'm gonna back it up for a second. Okay, you ran a drone over right when you started the uh, 19th, right when you started the next drone, you ran a drone over. This is fine. Uh, 18 or 19 supply is when you should do it. 19 supply is exact. Uh, you could be 19 supply right now if you had the other larva spent, but you're going to spend it in just a second anyways. Uh, so it's totally fine. Your, your timing of your third is good. I like it. Just make sure my biggest gripe of every Zerg player in any fucking level, even GM Zergs do this. But the lesser league you go, the more likely it happens. You get fucking larva sitting there all the time. The fact that you've let a larva... Like, you haven't larva capped yet, which is good. But the fact that you let a larva sit there long enough to get two larva... Is bad. And just throwing it out there, you always do want to take a 19 hatch. If you run your drone over there at 18 and go for the 300 minerals at your third, you will have more than 300. And if that's what you're going to do... Just know you can take a 19... If you're going to send your drone out at the time you did, it's 19. You're supposed to go 19 supply, but... We'll see what you do in just a second. We'll see how far it goes. Okay, yeah. So you did a 18... You did a 18 hatch, and this is the problem with it, okay? You saved for it. And there's the problem. You have three larvae already on the mineral line. Or, I mean, already on the hatchery. And this is really... If this ever happens, your build is now... Every single second that happens like this, even if it's one or two seconds... Your build is now that many seconds inefficient. 
more inefficient than it should be. Because for, for now, what this means is, is the hatchery stops automatically generating larva when it has three. So every second that's happening now is your build is, your, your larva is actually not producing up from this hatchery anymore. And you're just falling behind. It makes a big difference because it puts everything, everything gets behind because of that. So yeah, 19, uh, the, the ideal build is 16, 18, 16 hatch, 18 pool, 19 hatch. If you want to do a build like this. Now, on to bigger and, be bigger and better things. We have a Protoss here who has gone three gateways and a core. If I was you, I would be shitting my pants a little bit. And I would also, uh, I don't mind that you didn't really scout into his base further. But I kind of wish you did. And here's why. If you would have scouted into his base further, you put your Overlord at risk if he makes a Stalker first for it to die. Especially if you Chrono Boost it. But here's the biggest thing of all. You've already confirmed that this guy has opened up with three gates, a core, and no expansion. This is a fucking aggressive Protoss. But now if I were to ask you, what do you think you're dealing with? What would you, you know, like, realistically, you don't have to answer it. Oh, you don't really have to answer yeah. it. But realistically, if you were to answer it, what would you say? Be like, uh, gateway aggression. It's like, it's very vague. But yes, you're right. This could be uh, Adepts with a Stargate. This could be Sentries. This could be... Um, just the zealots with a fast, some type of fast tech, or this could be like, f for all we know, this could be, um, extremely, all, extremely all in and be like a proxy, or it could be someone who's going to go for some weird type of three gate opener into an expansion, yada, 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 all these types of builds. My point is, is you could justify what kind of a build he's going to do based off of where he builds his shit and also... How, many, how much gas he has. So if he has a pylon here and a pylon here, you can be like, is he teching? What is he doing? Is he making gas heavy units? Is he making gas costing units? How much gas does he have? If you, if you were to scout his main base and see one gas, let's just see what he has really quick. He's got two gases and they've mined about 100 and 100 each, roughly, which means this guy right now has about 200 gas to work with. Now here's the analysis I'm going to give you really fast. If this guy has 200 gas already mined this is what i would this is what i would say i would go all right there's a pylon here i don't see any tech right now or i'm a you know give it uh give it a second here if our overlord doesn't see any tech thrown down as you're making your way back to the gateways because your overlord would be like right here okay your overlord would be here you can't see the gateways from here if i were to see this right here this this gas being mined like this this is fucking fast gas this is fully saturated double gas before he expands this is committed, is what that means. If I were to be going back to his gateways and I saw no fucking tech here, this is my immediate thought process. I would go, is there going to be tech here as well? And if I don't see any tech here again and the gateways are currently building something, it would immediately make me go, okay, it's either Adept, Stalker, or Sentry. Guaranteed. And the Zealots are already ruled out, but the chances of it being a Stalker are higher or the Adept are higher. The chances of it being a Sentry are lower. Because if this guy's not going to build any tech unit behind a gateway like a robo, the chances of it being a sentry are really low. Like, sentry co uh, coincides well with, like, a robo-based build. It doesn't really do very well with pure gateway. It's a lot shittier with pure gateway. Adept, is, Adept would also be okay, but if it was Adept, I would expect also to see a Stargate or some shit like that. It would, I would think more like Adept if I saw a Stargate somewhere with it or something like that. Or a Council. But if there's no, no fucking tech at all, I would assume Stalker. And we'll see what he does in a second here. But scouting his gas tells you a lot. So you would suicide the overlord to scout his main. Okay, I'm going to pause it one more time. Yes. Because here's why. If you scout the overlord into his main, and you quote-unquote suicide it, the process of seeing what he builds out of the gateways because he's killing your overlord already tells you a lot of information as well. It tells you, oh, he made a stalker. He didn't make an adept really fast. He made stalker. Like it... Already gives you like an idea of what's happening. Wouldn't the wouldn't have the suicide it if you see the three gate? That's aggressive as fuck. I'm telling you, you should. Uh, like you, you can you can, you can okay. You can see this and go. You know what? Fuck it. I'm done. I'm done scouting. But you're limiting yourself to information. You don't know what the fucking actual build is other than aggressive. There's a lot of things you can die to if you just rule things. If you just chalk it up to it's aggressive. 
like, if you make stalkers, I would say, okay, yeah, there's multiple stalkers being made. Let's make Zergling speed before we go layer. If it's not, if it's not, uh, if it's not like stalker based aggression, I would say, okay, we can probably squeeze out a layer before getting Zergling speed. We're fine. We, and who knows, maybe we could even, if the guy sends over like three units and die and they, they all die right away, maybe we could just skip it all together and just go roaches into roach speed. Do something like that. Cause that, that is the kind of build I like to do, which is also what you're kind of emulating a little bit. But anyways, yeah, it's good. It's good to see the gas and count the gas. Because you get an idea of what's happening. That is advanced. So if you don't want to do that, that's fine. I like I, I do like at least what you've scouted so far. And we'll go on from it from here. Did you you cancelled your third, that's a mistake. I don't think you need to cancel the third. You could use it literally for uh, production. You're gonna have too much money if you cancel that third. The only way you could not uh, Okay, that's a big that's a, the big information right here. The only way you would not have um, a ton of money right now is if you were constantly spamming queens, uh, if you cancel your third like that. But here's what I would do. This this would be my reaction if I was you. I would have said keep the third base because I'm gonna need that larva, and also because this guy's being already what we know aggressive. Let's put both my first two queens instead of injecting both my hatcheries. Let's instead take more map control and more base coverage and let's throw a creep tumor down in my main and a creep tumor down in my natural so I can not only connect my bases as fast as possible so my queens can mobily def be very mobile and defend quicker against aggression but I can also have more vision around my base and every single bit of vision I have around my base that gets further out I have more of a safety net of comfortable like a comfortable feeling of a safety net around my base that alerts me when anything is near and the further out that gets the easier it is for me to deal with whatever kind of aggression he's doing so 100 percent if your opponent if, if your opponent's gonna be really aggressive with a build and you're doing a build like this a greedy ass like three base build just double tumor it for your first queens just throw a double tumor out and then make more queens behind it and um keep your third base because but no matter what he makes out of that gateway your first two tumors will be done which would mean your creep tumor would be like there to spreading about there your hatchery would finish which would be spreading from there to about there so you'd have about this much distance of no creep it'd be very limited and your main base could have a creep tumor there. Down, it would be making the ramp connect to your bases. This would be covered in creep all the way to like right there. So you'd be totally fine um, if you just double tumored with three base. And seeing this, seeing double adept, again, if you saw, if you if we're in the base and you saw the gas, and nothing was killing your overlord, you could literally come right back to this cliff. But now you'd have an idea and go, okay, he didn't attack my overlord. There is still nothing at his base, and his gateways have been building stuff. You can immediately assume he's either attacking me with zealots or adepts. Most likely, if you built the core and then started units, it's adepts. Because you can't build an adept before the core is done. Does that make sense so far? Like it and then if you knew how much gas he had, you would have you would assume it then finally the last part of it is is you go, okay, most likely he made adepts. Because he didn't, he didn't attack Marvel Lord at all. And I'm back on this cliff now. And I, ha I haven't seen another Adept yet. But because it is Adepts. And there's no expansion still. Let's go ahead and assume. Or like expect some more tech behind this. Most likely it would be a Stargate. So if I were you. My recommendation of how to defend this would be. Creep. Roach. Queen. That's how I would defend it. While droning. Let's watch a Stargate get thrown down. It's a Robo. Okay. Fucking weird. This is super weird. Um, it, there's one stalker, the robo is, um, if I, if I see the robo now, okay, I'm going to assume now that this is going to be, uh, probably for warp prism pressure, which would be really easy to shut down if you just have a decent economy before it starts, which you should have because you're making drones still. This is a bad build, which is why it makes no sense. If this guy sits back and makes r immortals on one base, he's going to have the shittiest looking army ever when he shows up at your base. I, if I was you and I saw the, uh, the uh, robo like this, I would assume it's for a warp prism and he wants to just get a fast warp all in in your base. So Queen Roach is, would easily shut, shut... This is a mistake. Queen Roach would be better here. You have to just know how to read your opponent. So... Again, think about it like this. I just want you to think about something. 
You see Adepts right now, okay? I want you to think about your decision here. You see Adepts coming out of his base. What would stop you? And look, look what you have right now. You have four Roaches, two Spines, and two Queens. If your opponent walked over to your base, and he was standing right here, your units could physically not chase him off creep and attack him. He could literally outrun you off creep. So what he can do right now is, is he can make you, he can prevent you from taking your third base. Which is the first thing that could become a problem later on. The second thing that could happen is if he's standing right here with Adepts, he could literally phase walk Adepts, shade them in to the back of your mineral line, and your spine crawlers are now useless. This is effectively six dead drones. And you're like, what the fuck, Vibe? Six dead drones? What do you mean? Well, the fact that you built two spine crawlers is 150 minerals per spine, and you easily have the larva to spend 300 minerals right now. You, could, you have five larva sitting there, and you would have had more if you still had the third base. You could have invested that 300 minerals right now instead of losing two drones and making spines would have been six more drones. So you're actually... Um, yeah, it would, you, you would basically just have more drones. A lot more drones. Uh, and it would it really explode your economy a lot faster. Because if this guy comes across the map with adepts, your spines are going to do literally nothing if this guy just shades past them. You're going to have to just use the roaches no matter what. If this guy is standing here and he shades into your natural or he shades into, shades into your main past the spines, your roaches are doing 100% of the work regardless. So these spines are a waste of fucking money. Big waste. And the beautiful thing, the beautiful thing about what I said earlier too is if you see your opponent's going to be aggressive and your reaction to that is to go double tumor, by the time, like right now, you could have already had two tumors at this point in time. Like around four minutes, easily you could have had two tumors. Off of each tumor, you could have had two. Uh, you could have expanded it like another time, so you could have added a tumor here, and you could have added, you could have had another tumor like there. You could have added a tumor like here, and then you could have had another tumor like on the edge of your cliff right here. So you could actually use your roaches to shove the creep forward in his fucking face, to like down the ramp, d over towards the ramp, and up towards the ramp, at your main natural third. And every time he shades, you could chase the shade, and you don't have to worry about if your creep is really far out. You don't have to worry about shit like. If I'm if I if the adepts are here and they start casting a shade into my main base, I do not have to worry if I chase the shade back to where I'm chasing the shade all the way in my main base and now he's smacking my drones at my natural. That's not going to happen because the amount of time a shade lasts is not long enough for that to be a problem. It's like a seven second thing. So if if this guy was standing right here and he cast a shade, by the time the shade gets right there, it's going to fucking finish or like right there, it's going to be done. And my roaches, if they're like right here chasing it. Because they're on creep and they can keep up with it. He'll either have to let it finish, which means I'm going to kill him now on my creep, or he's going to cancel it. And if the if the adept actually chased my roaches, the real adept, while I'm chasing the shade, I can turn my roach around right here and go shove it away when the adept is like over here still. For the real adept. Does that make sense? Like it would be so fucking easy to defend adepts with roaches, with good creep spread. Even if you don't have roach speed yet. So a bit of a misread on the overall game plan of your defense here, you're just fucking your economy up really bad by going back to two base and making spines. Spines do nothing against adepts. I'm just going to seriously say that right now. They they're fucking suck. Successful. All right, now he's making a sentry and two more adepts. This is not scary at all if you use roaches. Uh, if I were you, again, I would have made nothing but drones. I would have, I would have, if I were you, I would have made about six or eight Zerglings. No speed, just like six or eight Zerglings early on for the potential of him to attack me with his first Adepts. And then if I was still watching and I was like, all right, this guy is pooling units, pooling units, pooling units. I would go, okay, he just left his base with like seven units or so. I'm, I would just be guesstimating. Let's see if I'm right. He has, uh, right now he has 11 units, okay? He's got 9 Adepts, a Stalker, and a Sentry. That's totally fine. It's not a big fucking deal. Um, that's not really that scary. If I were to, if I were, I'm going to ask you a question again. This is for everybody who's learning right now. If I were to ask you, guys, how many, if you have uh, 4 Queens, how many Roaches, and let's just say these Spines don't exist. D pretend these Spines are not here. You have 4 Queens. How many roaches do you need to defend this? Nine adepts, one stalker, one sentry. 
How many would you feel? How many roaches do you think you need to feel comfortable to defend this? If it were to show up at your base and you don't want to die. I'll give you guys a second to think about it. And then I'll go ahead and tell you, uh, like, realistically, how many roaches would be totally fucking fine to keep you alive. Hey, yeah, you got it. You actually said it correct. Muffin Maestro, you guessed correctly. I would say roughly about six roaches. And you would be totally fucking fine. Because what you could do is you could have your queens that are creep spreading or injecting the base he is currently in front of with, like, all your roaches at first. You could have six roaches and, like, two or three queens in front fighting the initial roaches. Or, the, sorry, the initial army of his, right? And you would win that fight if he takes the fight because one roach beats one adept, no problem. One roach kind of trades with one stalker. Lots of stalkers beat lots of roaches, but when it's one-to-one, -one, a stalker kind of sucks ass. And a sentry's not going to do fucking anything because it's one sentry and you don't have to really worry about him blocking you in or anything like that. It's going to do seriously nothing. One sentry is going to be there for a guardian shield, basically. If he fights six roaches and like three queens in the front of your base, because you'd have like one still trans or injecting the main base, you'd be fucking fine. You would win that fight. If he shades forward into your main, while fighting your uh, main army, all you'd have to do is pull off like four out of your six roaches. Just leave like two queens... Or, sorry, two roaches and, like, three queens to fight at the front and chase the uh, the adepts in your main. And then if the guy cancels it and he keeps trying to do this where he's like, I'm going to keep fucking micering against you and making you split your army up so I can pick off the other side. If it turns into that, be like, you know what, fuck it. I'll just make, like, three more roaches. Cool. You're, you're trying to out-micro me here. I'll just make, like, three roaches and add some on because I might lose a couple. But your army is going to start thinning out a little bit and I'll be fine. But if the guy actually commits to a shade in your base... Your two roaches and, like, three queens in the front will kill the fucking rest of his units. The one stalker and sentry, no problem. And, like, the, the four roaches that you pulled off will easily kill what's left of the adepts in your main base, especially if there's another queen here. Because it's nine times out of ten, he's not going to try and kill your army. With He's not going to... He's, like, the, the Protoss right here, okay, with this kind of a fucking army, is not designed to kill your army. It's designed to weaken your economy. So even if... He gets into your base and he kills four drones, but he loses everything. He loses all of his adepts to kill four drones. If you were making drones in that process because you're not being like, I need 20 fucking roaches right now. You're still fucking great because four drones for nine adepts is a good trade for Zerg. I would take four drone losses to kill nine adepts every fucking day. I'd be like, yeah, please give me nine adepts. I'll lose four drones. That's like a fucking 1100 resource investment to a uh, 200 resource investment. It's totally different. And that's what the Protoss wants to do here. He wants to kill your drones. He does not want to kill your army. If he tries to fight your army, he's a bad player. Because it's adepts suck ass at fighting army. Especially if he's the one who's behind on economy. So, so far, I hope what we're talking about it makes a lot of sense. Your economy just sucks right now. Uh, you should have about like 50 drones right now. And you can still defend this. Now we look at the units tab here. We have seven roaches. And look at this is what I'm talking about. This is exactly what I'm talking about. I suck, sad face. It's okay. The first step is is realizing it. <laughs> Muffin Maestro, don't feel, I hope I'm not being harsh. I'm just being fucking honest. Look at the amount of roaches you just made. You have 16. You know what just happened? You just gave the Protoss, a, a, like, literally, like, the Protoss just fucked your drones up. That's basically what just happened. You just made 10 more roaches than you needed because you panicked right there. You're like, oh, fuck. Y you got into that mindset where you're like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Protoss. Protoss, he's moving on the map. He he where is he? He's not taking a fight. Oh, my God. I fucking saw him. Overlord's over here. He walked in the fog. What's he? Is he pulling units? What's he doing? He just went home. He's like, yeah, I'll just go home. The Protoss is like, no, you know what? I'm actually just going to go back. And because you made 10 roaches extra over what you really fucking needed, you effectively just lost 10 larvae at this point in time of drones. <coughs> now, the only way that that actually becomes a benefit to you is if you go counterattack him right now and you break his fucking wall and you kill him. Because if you sit there now on 16 roaches, that's now every single second that goes by, that's less drones you could have had. And you can't get that time back. You don't just suddenly get drones magically popped out of nowhere. You never get those drones back. So every second that goes by is fucking lost mining time. 
You have to have more confidence in your units and what they're capable of. And adepts fucking suck. I'm just going to throw that out there. Adepts only win if their opponent has like seven gateway production and he shows up with like five adepts to your one unit. If he has like a, like a if he shows up with like 20 adepts and you have four roaches currently and he has like seven gateways on two bases and he's warping in seven, 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 seven adepts. And you're like, oh shit, start making roaches. And he as suddenly you have like, he just keeps like one shotting your roaches over and over. Then yeah, I totally agree that you need to make these roaches like this. But this fucking dude is one base for the longest time. His economy sucks ass. So seven, seven, seven. It was anyone else thinking about that friends episode when I said that? Cause that's what my brain immediately thought of. Seven, seven. <clears throat> his, you just have to realize his economy sucks. So you have to know the pace of the game. His economy is really bad. So over committing to the roaches like this is really, really shitty for you. He's not doing damage to you. Like look at the resources lost. You haven't officially lost anything, but you opened up with a three base build. The Protoss opened up with a one base build and look at your guys' economies. Like they're pretty fucking similar. It's really bad for you as Zerg. This guy, this guy's basically giving you the game on a silver platter and then you've given it back right to him. Thank you guys for the support, by the way. I appreciate it. Zero, thank you, dude. And uh, Muffin, thank you for the sub earlier. Um, I like that you're spending creep right now. This is the best answer to fixing a lot of your problems uh, in terms of like actually feeling confident to fight your opponent. A lot of Zerg players that don't feel confident in the mid game, it's because their creep spread sucks. They don't know what the fuck's happening because they're like, I don't know. He could be anywhere. He could be doing anything. A lot of players look at this and go, I, he, dude, he could fucking have like 100 supply right now. He could have 200 supply. I don't know. He could have like 150 for all I know. His Like if I don't make units, I could probably fucking die. Like for instance, these Ravagers. Don't need them. You don't fucking need them. What you do need is you need faster creep spread. Because it, let's just say hypothetically your creep spread was out here. And you saw he was pushing out with like three immortals, eight sentries, and 15 adepts in about 45 seconds from now. Which is fucking possible. That actually would be possible around like 7 minutes and like 10 seconds or 7.05. If he would have been making immortals the whole time. And his initial army he sent out and came back with. And now he's making nothing but immortal sentry. And then he's got double gas mining at his natural. And he's going heavy gas style. He could totally go immortal sentry. But you could have easily had enough time to have saturated your third base throughout this whole process. And if your creep spread was better, you see, oh, look, he's right here on the edge of my creep right there. At like at like seven, seven, like right, right around seven minutes, your creep literally could be like right there. And this is not like insanely fast creep either. This is like average creep. If you just, if you would have done what I said, which is your first two, tumor, first two queens spawn a tumor. It's not always like that. But if your first two queens spread a tumor, your creep spread is expedited so fucking much because those two tumors are going to be like just spreading your creep at such a faster rate. It speeds up your creep spread by a shitload. It's, it's really crazy how much it does. But you lose larva, but we already went over that. Why you would do that earlier. Anyways, your creep spread could be like right here. And if you saw a mortal sentry walking to your base, because I'm going to let you know a secret. Creep spread's going to tell you if he's doing a mortal sentry all in because you can't actually do a doom drop immortal sentry all in. It doesn't work like that. He's not going to have two immortals in a fucking warp, in a warp prism fly into your base and have 20 gateways in his base and warp in 20 units at a time. That's just not going to happen. He's also not going to have a mothership flying on the base and recall it into your base. That's not going to happen either. If he's going to do an immortal sentry all in, he's going to walk across the map, which means he has to walk across your creep if your creep is good, uh, which is what you should focus on. And when he when he's on your creep, at that point in time, if you were if you were to be like, oh shit, he's got like eight sentries, then you make sentry or then you make ravagers and you make ravagers back at your base. You could be like, oh look, an immortal sentry all in right there. I have time now, about twenty seconds or maybe like ten to twenty seconds, to make ravagers now. As a response, because now I need him. And your Ravagers would finish 100% guaranteed before he's killing you, basically. Because it's a fucking... It's a, it's a 9 second uh, evolve timer. And if his army's here, sentries do not walk from here to here in like 2 seconds or 3 seconds. It would take them like 15 to 20 seconds to get there as a sentry. A stalker could probably make it in 10. Without blink. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have time to react to this. You don't have to be so panicky about it. Right now, you're, you're playing into the Protoss' hands where you're you're like, I don't fucking have no idea. Now I'm just going to panic and make shit because I think I need it. 
You're a Zerg, and Zerg does not work like Terran and Protoss. Zerg is like reactionary. And if you if you react to someone who's got a half-assed fucking build, you react in a way that's going to be half-assed defense with greed. You have to know the limits of your units, which is what we just talked about with like the six roaches. That's why I wanted you to tell me what you thought was good. You answered right, but in the game you played wrong. So I like that you know you just panicked in the game because you started thinking, he's in the fog, fuck, make units, oh god. Crepe spread fixes that. Um, and yeah, it's... Uh, it would be really easy to hold his timing if you just had a good economy. And then once he really committed to it, once he commits to a timing, then as a response, you should also be like, all right, I have to, if I'm not fully saturated on my three bases. Okay, here's, here's a better way to say this. Okay, I'm going to say this in a different way. Yo, Bigum, thank you for the bits. This is really important, and I want you to pay attention to this. The bases of the, the amount of bases your opponent has, you want to plus one that, up to three. So three base Zerg is the maximum for this logic, okay? I'm not talking about four base Zerg. I'm not talking about five base Zerg. I'm not talking about six base Zerg. I'm talking about one, two, or three base Zerg. This logic applies to every single game. If your opponent, whatever bases they're on, if you scout it, you want to be one saturated base above what they're at. That's your ideal go-to number. If your opponent is on one base all in, you can totally be on a two base saturated defense, but that does not mean you have to cancel a third base. It could still be for larva production. And with the build you're doing, don't ever cancel your third. The only time I would ever say cancel your third is if you're getting proxy gated and you're like, God, there's like four zealots already walking by my third and it's not even done yet. Then sure, maybe. But other than that, don't ever cancel it. Don't ever cancel it to shit like this. So... Again, always stay one saturated base above your opponent. And the second you saw your opponent go, you know what? I think I want to take a natural. That should have been your cue to go like this. All right. I'm going to saturate my third now. My goal now is to saturate my third base because he's going for a natural. And if at any point in time, be it a zergling at the front door, an overlord on a cliff, an overlord on the side, a fucking creep spread area. If at any point in time you catch wind that he's now just fucking going in that like gas pedal all in right in your face it's just not gonna like four void rays five plasma overlord uh, no, like, a century immortal all in walks out of his base by a zergling or on your creep spread at that point in time you flip the fucking zerg switch and you go it's like economy you just flip it units just stop making economy and you just go full on roach production at this point and if it's like century based you can make some Ravagers with it because you can break force fields and you can land Biles on sentries and shit. And that's it. That's all you got to do. But if you're like, if you're like literally going, like if you got a fucking, some dipshit drone over there being like, units, drones, units, drones, units, drones. Just fucking like cranking out one or the other. Like, what's that? It's like a guy with a clipboard being like, you're mining gas. It's a fucking roach. Oh, okay. You're mining minerals. It's a fucking overlord. Okay. We can't use this one either. You're mining minerals. Okay. It's a drone. You go over there. Mine those minerals. Okay, now you three, you're mining gas. These are fucking roaches again. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. It's like you're making a bunch of units that are literally just sitting on their ass for no fucking reason. They're just doing nothing. They're doing... They're, they're literally feeding your fear is what they're doing. These are like... This, it's like your bodyguard squad. Uh, imagine this, okay? Imagine this. Let's say you're going to the store. Okay? And you're just an average guy. You're just a guy who's just going to the store. And someone online told you, hey man, I fucking don't like you on Twitter. For some reason, because of a tweet you made. And what do you do? You call up fucking Bodyguards R Us, okay? And you're like, I'll pay $200 an hour for the bodyguards because I'm going to the store. Okay, thanks. And you paid $200 to get escorted to the store because you're fucking worried. You know, it's it's a shitty ass analogy. It's a terrible analogy. It, okay, it's, uh, now when I'm listening to myself talk, it's really bad. But you get the point. It's excessive as fuck. This is way excessive. You don't need it. Uh, you could have you hired your neighbor. Or you could have asked your neighbor to go to the store with you. And your neighbor could be a 22-year-old female. <laughs> you would have been fine. But my point is, is yeah, you panicked a lot. And this is, this is fucking you up pretty bad. So now, look at the worker count. Again, nothing has happened. Literally nothing has happened. And you're actually about to lose the worker lead. You you actually tied him for a second. You, 
You have successfully just gutted yourself. Because this is a way I want you to think about StarCraft, okay? I want you to... I literally... If you have a... If you, can, if you can do this, I want you to do this. You know how when you have like a... You're using the program Paint and you grab the eraser and you just start erasing shit and there's little fragments of all the picture that you just erased a second ago? I want you to try your best to do that to everything you know about StarCraft for a second here. Just fucking erase all of it. There will be fragments and shit. You won't be able to get rid of all of it. You'll still have your habits and your ways. But try to get rid of most of it, okay? And this is the this is the one thing I want you to try and stuff in there and replace all your current StarCraft knowledge with. And it is... If you're going to play macro, every second that goes by in the game that you're missing out on drones that could that you could have had that, you're, you, that you don't have... You should think about StarCraft in a way where you are a mountain, and your opponent is a mountain. And these mountains are forming, they're growing. But you're growing at a slower and slower and slower rate as the fucking game goes. And the only way a Zerg Mountain beats a Protoss Mountain is if the Zerg Mountain is like twice the size. So, economy is your mountain, and you need it to grow a lot faster than your opponents. Because if you don't physically accomplish that, you're going to lose every game. Because early game... Unless your opponent is really bad and makes really awful decision, decisions, Zerg supply trades worse than Protoss and Terran supply at equal supply. If you are equal to your opponent, you are losing the game. The only way you ever win the game as Zerg early game with your hatchery tech based units is if you are overwhelming them. Like, have you ever seen what it looks like if you have 20 supply of marine medevac versus... 20 supply of just Zerglings. I think you might lose one Marine. Maybe. You probably would lose zero. Uh, like, it's not fucking good. Like, it's... There's, there's so many things that are just so bad. Um, for Zerg. Or e when you're equal supply. The, the, the perfect thing for Zerg is if you actually capitalized on the ability to... St but here's the thing, okay? Let me just say something else really fast before I keep going. Going with a mountain idea, okay? So, the or like a, it could be like a flower, okay? It could be like a flower. Because uh, there's another part to it. Scouting. Scouting is the second part to, to making your build grow. Scouting is important because you actually get a detailed information fucking piece of paper, basically. It's like, you, this is what you're dealing with. This is what you need to work on. This is what you need to get ready for. And what you scout this game? You scouted the three gate fucking core before a natural. That's a terrible build. That's a really bad build from Protoss. And if you would have, uh, you know, gauged that in a way where it's like, okay, I got to take a little bit more precaution. And a great way would have been creep spread. Um, and then when he moves out, then I can take a real precaution. Then then we're then we're good. Um, and your drone count would have grew so much faster than his. And now when he does the real timing, you're making units. Like we'll just say, you you will you will have been making units at your ideal saturation for like a solid extra minute or ninety seconds longer than he has. Whereas if you, okay, hold on. Don't think about it. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna change the analogy. Don't think about it as in terms of like a mountain. Instead, here's what I want you to think about. This is what I want you to think about. This is a better way to think about it. This is actually a perfect way to think about it. I just thought of I just thought of it. Okay, listen to this. Let's say you you're on like a like a game show. Okay, and the objective is is there are there's a, there's a room. You got to walk into a big ass room. Okay, you got to walk into a big just one big fat room. It's like a vault, and there's a shitload of like gold bars on the floor of this room. And the goal is is they say, all right, you can Keep as many gold bars as you can get. Every gold bar you pull out of that room and take to the like the, the box over here, you can keep all of it. And that's your prize. But you have 10 minutes. And go. And the the way the game works is, is you have five friends. And each one of those friends, they're all standing in jail, basically. You have to pay five gold bars to get each one of them out of jail. And uh, or you can like or yeah, that's it, that's it. That's just that's it, that's it. That's all you do. What are you gonna do? Are you going to, like, get five gold bars and hire a friend to go grab more gold bars than you? Or are you going to hire a friend to be like, you know what? I want you to actually stand over there and supervise while I go grab more gold bars. 
That's basically what you're doing. Kind of. Okay, these analogies are really hard <laughs> to make. But you get my point. Like, there's so much potential for you to just make so much more money at a faster rate, but you're not capitalizing on it because you're instead investing into supervisors. These guys are supervising. They're fucking sitting on their ass. They're doing nothing. All right, I'm going to stop giving analogies and I'm going to get to the point because I feel like I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm expended, dude. I got nothing. There's nothing left. Fix your fucking macro. That's it. All right. Um, yeah. My point is, is you're at 7 minutes and 20 seconds in the game right now, and you have 52 drones. You could have been at, like, 60 drones, realistically, in this game, the way it went, by about 6 minutes. 90 seconds ago, you could have had 8 more drones than you already have now. And that 90 seconds of time could have been uh, 90 times 60. Or, uh, sorry, it would be... Uh, what am I saying? Forget, uh, forget what I'm saying. I was going to do the math, but I'm about to fuck it up. I don't care. It's a lot of money. 90 seconds. Uh, 14 drones. You do the math. E each drone mines about a mineral second you're missing out on. Okay. So the guy poked you again. He poked you again. Okay. And now what are you doing? You're doing the exact same thing again. Watch this. Look at, just look at your uh, your habit right now. What are you, you're making roaches. You're worried. You're like, he's out there. He's sharking around my creep. I get it. I understand. I get you. But you're making roaches, you're making roaches, you're making roaches, you're making roaches, and now you're making drones. This is not at all ideal. Actually, I think I went too far, by the way. I want to see the Protoss' force field. This is this is perfect uh, way to look at your habits. This is what we're looking for. Sorry, I went too far. We see a Protoss. We see a Protoss with sentries and immortals and, and gateway units. Now, if I were you, I would immediately have a... I would shit my pants here if I was standing there right now. I, I would immediately be like, run away! Oh my god, run back now! Because the last thing you want to do is fight sentries in a choke point like this. You don't ever fucking want to stand at a choke point when sentries are nearby. That's terrible. You're gonna die if he force fields you. If this guy is good, he will just cut your army in half and then he will run you over because he'll kill 50% of your army and then he'll kill 50% of your army with 100% of his. So you backed up early enough, but still, whatever. But now look at this guy's army, right? This army is three mortals. You killed the prism. And, and like he's only got enough sentry force fields for uh, seven more at the moment, but it'll realistically be more like nine or ten, because in the time he's casting sentry force fields, he'll probably generate one more per sentry. So roughly, after a, a fight of about like sixty seconds or forty seconds or so, uh, like less than a minute, but still a decent amount of time, he'll generate a couple more. Um, but this army is not huge, and it also just lost the ability to be re to be reinforced. I don't mind that you made your initial one round of roaches right here. This is okay. There was no guarantee you're going to kill that warp prism right away. This is our normal reaction. But watch as we go a little bit further. Your army is definitely... This is also a big mistake. Okay, before we talk about more about macro, I'm going to talk really briefly, about, really briefly about your micro. Don't ever do what you just did. Don't ever chase your opponent in your base. Instead, zone them in your base. Your Roach Ravager should have immediately went down this way, and if you see him going down this way, you should have gone down this way. Because if this Protoss player was good, and he realized what you were doing, he saw you were coming from behind him, if I was him, this is what I would do. I would go, oh, look at the Zerg, he's right there. I'm going to walk right here, and I'm going to go Force Field, Force Field, Force Field. Three Force Fields would block this ramp. And then I would, and then if you bile it, whatever, it'll take time to do that. If I'm Protoss, I'm going to walk all the way to your fucking main base, and I'm going to Start getting to a point where I walk my entire army up the main ramp and I kill your main base and I throw one force field every time you throw a bile on the ramp. You bile it, I force field it. Bile it, force field, bile, force field, bile, force field, bile, force field. I guarantee I would kill your main base and then I would just recall out of your base. So don't ever do that. It was a misclick. I don't care. I'm telling you anyways, in case you ever do do that. I, I don't take fucking excuses. I see what I see and I call it. Just don't ever do that. I, I, it's okay if it was a misclick, but yeah, it's, you could totally be abused. <laughs> mm. 
now, right now, okay? Your your roach production now is getting excessive. And um again, and uh I would have I would stop making roaches right now. I would literally stop making roaches. You, what you really want to do is you really want to get your economy and you're you're still making more roaches. And you are now droning because he's backed off. But you're getting to a point where you have so much army supply that's once again just chilling. You're getting to the situation too where this is another thing about StarCraft when it comes to coaching that a lot of people might not understand, especially if you're a lower league player. But we're going to keep going because I'm sure a lot of players get into these situations. But I want to make this point very clear. Everything I'm going to say from this point forward is irrelevant if you play the game correctly. The idea is you want to play the game correctly. But if you fuck that up and you play the game incorrectly and you get in a situation like this, then it applies. But just know, if you ever get in a situation like this, where you are constantly flip-flopping drones, units, drones, units, drones, units, drones, units, and you haven't actually lost any of your units yet, you're playing the game really poorly. That just, you should keep that in the back of your mind. If you are always feeling forced to make an army and your opponent does not attack you, and you're not losing the army, but you keep making the army, and you're just sitting there on it, that is bad play. You should always make the army for a fight, obviously for a fight, but you should make enough to defend yourself if your goal is to make drones, not to kill him if your goal is to make drones. And you're making you're over making roaches every time in these fights to where I would literally say you should probably go counterattack him with how much shit you have, but if you do that and you lose your units because he has a, a defender's advantage now and you don't make drones because you have to then remake units, you also fall into the trap of just making units on a shitty economy all day, which is really bad. You don't want to... You're, you're putting yourself in a trap of panicking and making units when you don't need them. Some of them, yes. All of them, no. You're like, I don't want to just stop your timing. I want to take an absolute shit on it and crush it and like three times over. That's the amount of units you're making here. Like, you're fucking over making units way too hard for what he's doing. He's just poking and you're basically all in your army to a point to where it's like i'm so fucking aggressive which is exactly why this is happening you are so close in economy because you're allowing him to dictate your your army here successful. trust me i gotta pause it one more time and say this if you just play a little bit greedier you will go through some games where you will die and you'll be like oh man I'm drone too hard, and I died. That sucks. But you'll eventually get to a point where you're like, "All right, I'm feeling kind of, I'm feeling more comfortable now. I feel like I actually know how to gauge my opponent's situation better, based off how they expand. And now I can kind of gauge how real aggressive this is gonna be, and I can really make a detail or a really educated guess on how much I need to defend myself." And how all-in this actually is. And the faster I get to an actual economy, which is, once again, that rule we talked about. If this guy's two base, and you hit three base economy, and then you don't have to ask yourself anymore, do I need drones? Do I need units? Drones, units, drones, units, drones, units. No, you just made drones really heavily. You saturated fully, and now you're going full units. The question's over then. You just make units, 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 units. You max, you attack. Units, 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 units. You max, you attack. And you fucking crush his ass because you're going to get situations against people in Diamond League where you have 200 supply versus their 110. You could be maxed right now. I'm not going to lie. If you're going Roach Ravager, mostly Roach, you should have been maxed. If you were, if we're set, this is the GM level, okay? If you were GM level, in this game, realistically, with if you went double creep tumor first, which slows your economy down a little bit, I would realistically say you could have been maxed by 840. 8 minutes and 40 seconds, you could have been maxed out. Uh, but you've done that, flipped the switch up so many up up and down so many times that you've panicked and you've uh, you're at 146. So look at it again. This is the exact same problem again. Look at this. This is my point I'm trying to make here. You, you really need to get to the fucking saturated ideal economy, which is 66. Look what's happening. I want you guys to see what's happening. Watch production. Watch production. 
I'm going to put this in normal speed. You're taking a fight. You're winning a fight. This is a fucking terrible position for your opponent to engage in. You should feel confident as hell right now that you're winning this fight. You pull back. You lose like three roaches when you pull back. That's not much. He just burned a lot of force fields. He lost like six stalkers. He burned force fields. He lost a lot of energy on his sentry, which is his control of the fight. You just scouted a shitload of adepts still that are that have still been here since the early game. Your army right now, if he pushed further, this army would win. His army sucks. And you panicked and made 18 more roaches. I 100%, if I were you, I would have said, I just fucked him up real bad because I just made this Protoss player lose confidence to push me because he just blew all of his stalkers. He lost them all because they were way too far forward. And he blew like a third of his energy on his sentry force fields. The, the level of confidence that Protoss has to push you here is really low. Really, really low. And you played into his hands by... Max, like just making a fuckload more roaches again. You're not really fixing your economy problem every time you fight. You really should fix the like make the economy ideal and then units. I like I can't stress that enough. It's so fucking important. Remember that room analogy I said? You're basically mining. You're just basically getting gold bars out of the room with three three friends instead of five. You have two of them just sitting there. You're like, I'd like to help you get gold. I could have been helping you for the last seven fucking minutes, but I'll just watch. <laughs> You're flushing the gold down the toilet. Look at the economy. You're tied again. And look at the worst workers killed. Nothing has happened. Look at the, the worker, the units killed. Barely anything has happened. This has literally been the most timid Protoss ever. He's like, this is the Protoss. He like walks over, he tip, he dips his foot in the pool, and he's like, no, 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 no. I'll back up. I'll come back later. Dips his toe in the pool again. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I'll back up. I'll come back later. Dips his toe in the pool again. No, 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 no. Not yet. And you're just like fucking panicking every time. Because here's the biggest thing. Okay, I got I to gotta pause it again and tell you. Here's the biggest thing. This is the problem you're, you're, you're going to run into a lot later on in your life in StarCraft if you progress from this point. If you don't control an economy correctly, let's just say you max out right now, okay? Let's say you're like, you know what? Boom. 28 more supplier roaches. I just spent... A large chunk of my bank. Let's say you're right now. You just made, you started two two, like level two melee, level two range weapons. You start an infestation pit, and uh, you also start hydro upgrades. And you made max supply on roaches. You spend your entire bank right now. The problem you're gonna run into against better players is if they actually make an economy better than you do. It's not about maxing out one time. It's about maintaining remaxes over and over. And you physically can't fucking do that if your economy is three out of five friends mining gold. You know what I'm saying? You need more drones than this because your economy, the rate at which it, at, the rate at which it increases, is very minimal. You're not going to have any bank at all. You're you're going to always be in a situation where you're dumping your entire investment into your units that you currently have. And roaches suck. Like roaches are okay right now for one stage. And if they win the game, awesome. If they don't, you need to have you, you need to remax into something better, because it the roaches they fall off really hard a little bit later on. Once your opponent gets like eight immortals or like seven immortals and some decent sentry count, you're gonna just get shit on, uh, and you won't be able to remax for shit if you have a bad economy. Which I feel like is why you lose this game. If you lose, it's because you allow him to re like he's building up the immortal count while you remax roaches off a bad economy.
Okay. So this attack was ill-advised. I would say there is one way you could have taken this attack a lot better. For instance, the way you attack this fight is you went looking for his army. Okay? You went looking for his army. That's a fucking mistake. You know why? Because your economy sucks ass. You, you only ever... This is another rule of Zerg, okay? This is another rule of Zerg that a lot of Zergs don't follow. They break this shit all the time. If I was like a sensei Vibu, I would be. I would have a yardstick and I'd be slapping people's hands and be like, No! Don't touch the army! No! Stop! Don't touch the army! You don't want to fucking fight his army right now. Because what you're doing right now is you're trading. You are trading with him. And trading with your opponent's army when you have an equal economy is fucking bad. That is not a Zerg. That, the golden rule of Zerg is you only ever trade with your opponent's army if you have a better economy than them or you have a death ball. The only exception to having a better economy is when you're hive tech and you have like a legit army that can take serious fights like broodlords or something like that. Then it doesn't matter. You, you can once again play Zerg like you play Protoss or Terran once you have broodlords because your army is capable of winning the first fight. Okay, but if you have 52 workers versus 52 workers and you're fighting against a higher tech superior army with just roaches, the last fucking thing you want to do is take a fight. Instead, what you want to do is you want to trade army, your army with his economy and in the process, pick apart his army that gets scattered around. So instead of going into his base and going, um, where's that army at with your like bloodhound roaches, Gary has got him. Just watch this. I want you to watch this really quick. So you, you went to his base and you saw... Guys, I'm being very, very thorough right now, by the way. I'm not being brutal. I'm just being thorough. This guy's getting a lot for his $25. You know what I see right now? This is what I see right now. I see a juicy-ass natural that's just waiting to be violated. Do you see that? I see that. Look at that fucking natural. Oh my god, it's so juicy. Violate this fucking base. There's nothing stopping you. What the fuck is he going to do? Here's what you should have done. First things first. This is what I would recommend every time. Make a changeling and just run over to his base. Try to get an idea where his army is before you really take a fight. Okay, that's first step. You chose to skip that step, which is okay, because right now you lucked out. His army happens to be out of position over here. When his natural is way fucking exposed right now. Okay? And what you should totally have done is... You should have ran about half your army to his main base. Into his natural and main base. And let your other half kind of chill. This is why. And this is why. If you run like, like literally this much. Just half your army. Run it into his natural. The reason why this would be huge is... Is because this army over here could back up for a second to like right there. And you could run into his natural, and you could maybe leave like a changeling here or something, or one roach, just to see if he's going to come defend it. If he does not defend it, he is now all in, and you have now started an all in in his base when he's in the middle of the fucking map. Which means you have started an all in about 20 seconds before he's going to like catch up to you. That's amazing for Zerg. It gives you such an advantage in an all in situation, a base trade situation. And what you could do, literally, if you really wanted to, if you're like, oh, I just killed all your probes. Fuck it. I'll bring my army back now and defend my base. I'll, I'll sacrifice one hatchery after I killed all your probes and regroup in front of my natural and fight you with everything. You could do that. Or you could just be like, let's base trade and I'll kill your base. Half your base is already dead before you even start killing mine. You could do that too. That also works. And that could be a result of you just running into his natural. The other one is if you leave like a changeling or a, some type of scout, one roach, an overlord, whatever, like here, just to see if he's going to come back and defend it. And you have half your army in his natural. You could run into his main base. You don't got to kill the Nexus if you don't have time to do it. Run further in. Make him chase you into his base deeper, further in. And if you really wanted to get really annoying with it, you could leave like four Ravagers on the ramp. Be like, Bile. 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 Your Ravagers will die eventually, but you'll beat the shit out of his army while he tries to come up a choke point ramp in the process. And you'll kill probes again in the process in his main. And maybe even the Nexus, because it actually takes fucking forever for his whole army that is a big fat blob to trickle through this and then also trickle through this. And if you have, and it's, it also takes a while for you, but you're not sending your whole army through. You're only sending half. 
and you can get through this much faster than you get everything through it. Because the roaches are also, they walk faster than every unit here except for a stalker. They walk faster than an immortal, than a zealot, than an adept, than a sentry. You have the ability on your side. Or the, the mobility on your side. So you, there's nothing stopping you from just killing 44 probes, basically. And possibly a nexus. Or maybe a juicy pylon. Or maybe some tech. And if you see he comes back to defend his base and he doesn't want to base trade you. Remember how I told you to only send half your army in? And you're like, oh, look, half his army is, or his whole army is coming back to defend his base right now. And half my army is in his base. Remember that roaches I told you to leave right here? What if you just sent these roaches up this way? Like you're like, all right, roaches are right here. Let's just walk up this way and walk into his third while he's now committed into his natural and main trying to defend himself. And you have successfully just fucking destroyed a Protoss in the, in, from inside out. He is now 100% all in and now has to all... He's also... Not only is he all in, but he's in his own fucking main base because he's trying to kill your roaches. And now he's committed to... Okay, I gotta now walk out of my main, walk all the way to your base, which gives you like 30 or 40 seconds to react to this. To, uh, Thanks for the thorough analysis. You deserve it. Yo, thank you very much, Muffin Maestro. I appreciate it, dude. But then you get into his third base and now he's just dead. Does that make sense? And the reason why you would attack him like this is because you're equal in economy. And you should know that. Because he's on three base, you're on three base. You have a fourth base, that's not even done yet. But you're both you're both equal economy, so you should never be like, Where's this fucking army? <laughs> Get the army! The only time you should ever fight his army is if it's on creep. And you have a defender's advantage. Don't just YOLO chase his army off creep and choke points. Because if you kill this economy... Even if, even if, okay, let's say this guy is a god. And let's say he's like, holy shit, roaches are coming. And the second he sees these roaches, he sends these probes to the main. And you're like, he's like barely getting out of there. It's like a fucking movie scene where shit's exploding behind you. And you're running down the hallway. And his probes get into the main base. And he sees you running all the way into the main base. And then he's like, oh shit, I have an observer. And I see units over here too. And then he recalls all of his fucking uh, probes to the third base. Or even the natural. He, like, gets around your roaches. He totally does this ninja move on you, and no probes die. And your roaches are now uh, in his main base with, like, some of his Century Immortal uh, chasing you. And they're going to kill it eventually, but it's going to be, like, a decent fight. Because now he's had to split up his army, too, because you split your army up. And your army over here, that tried to go to the third base, sees he has an army here. And you go, you know what? Fuck it. He's prepared there. Let's just turn around and go home. You could literally just turn around and go home. And in the process of doing that... You just cut his army in half because you cut your army in half. And I'm not going to lie, your army being cut in half versus his army being cut in half is an advantage for you. Immortals excel in higher numbers. It's exponential how big of a dick immortals have, the more there are. Like, if he's got 10 immortals, he kills roaches at a fucking insane rate compared to if he has 5. You know what I'm saying? It's in your best interest to split him up right now. It makes a lot of sense for you to do that. And in the process of you splitting them up, if you can if you can get all the damage done we just talked about like a, a second ago, fucking wonderful. If you can't, it's still not bad for you because you you still you give him a hiccup in his base. You do some damage to him. You trade. Then you actually get a decent trade with whatever you have in his base. And you remax shitty supply into better supply like Hydra in this situation. You know? So again, we'll... Uh, Watch this situation when you see a Zerg go bloodthirsty for the army. The biggest way to explain it, without like the, the TLDR, is you're playing the Protoss's game, you're not playing a Zerg's game. And what I mean by that is you're allowing the Protoss to dictate where the fights happen. You're not dictating where the fight happens yourself. Every single time. You allowed the Protoss to take a fight that was advantageous for him there, and you allowed the Protoss to, to, to dictate where you were all the time defensively, and also how uh, panicky you felt with making units. And now in this situation, you're still not dead. You still have a chance. <laughs> but because you just took a terrible fight, <clears throat> I would say this is the first time this entire game that I feel like you actually have to make units. This is the first time in the entire game you actually have to make an army. And you actually got burrow move, which is great. I like that you got burrow move. I would I was actually going to say 
if you're never going to transition off of roaches, I highly recommend you get burrow move. Because burrow move would actually allow you to uh, fight his army, kill zealots, and the second he tries to get a nice force field uh, block on you, you burrow, go under it, go backwards, retreat. And then only when you have thinned out all of his roach, or all, sorry, all of his like zealots, then you shove forward and burrow, go under force fields, shove forward, burrow, go forward, go under force fields. Does that make sense? That's how you would micro that. You do not actually dive on his units with burrow through force fields until his zealots are dead. Instead, you do it defensively. Because if you just burrow move into his army with a bunch of zealots like this, you're just going to be like, hey, how you doing? I'm just dying down here. Don't mind me. It'd be like saying, it'd be like doing this. It'd be like, this is another analogy for you. It'd be like going, all right, guys. We're going to have to crawl on our hands and knees through this tunnel. But just so you know, there's a uh, fire. Everything's on fire in there. We're all going to be barbecued by the time we get to the side. But we could do it. I think we can make it. Just hold your breath so you don't pass out from the smoke. We'll make it. <laughs> no one's making that, that crawl. <laughs> You're all going to fucking die. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> these are bad analogies. I'm sorry. That was a dark one. You get my point, though. You, it's never going to work if you do that. Okay. <clears throat> there are two options right now. One is macro. Two is uh, all in. Judging on what you're about to do with your larva, I hope the fucking god that it is drones and macro and that you don't attack. Because if you make units and don't attack or if you attack and make drones, both of those are mistakes. Because if you attack and make drones, you are going to lose your army because you're not reinforcing it. And then it gives him an option to counterattack you and fucking kill you. If you make... Uh, so that's bad. If you instead make units and go back to being defensive, you lose the ability that you just capitalized on. And here's the ability you just capitalized on. These units are, are important. These are the only important units the Protoss has right now. Every single unit he has made out of a gateway is literally a walking turd. The only unit out of a gateway that is actually important is the Templar. Either Templar are good because they make Archons, and Archons are good. Also, High Templar are also very effective. But this is a turd. That's a turd sandwich. That's a turd salad. And that's a turd just full diarrhea. These are all fucking turds. They are literally shit. <laughs> all they're designed to do is buy time for the good stuff. So the fact that you have just invested your army... You, you lost a lot of your army to kill his turds. <laughs> you have successfully shoveled the shit out of his army, okay? To get to the good stuff. If you don't capitalize on that, it's okay, but you better make fucking drones. Because if you allow these immortals to stack up, that's a good way to lose the game. You made hydras. You better fucking attack him right now. You shoveled the shit. You better capitalize on it, dude. Don't let him shit all over the place again. So the, the move you've chosen to do is shovel shit and make more shovelers. <laughs> you made hydras and you're attacking. That's okay. It's you. I, I'm not disagreeing with this. You just took a good fight there because you killed off the majority of his army. But here's the thing. Your army is very squishy. Look at what you have. Exclusively Hydra. And what did you make? Exclusively Hydra. And do you have a speed upgrade? No. This is scary. So your logic is okay, where you just took a good fight. I will not uh, disagree with that. You took a good fight. Could have been better, but it was still better for you than it was for the Protoss. So the definition of that is a good fight. But you have a situation now where you have zero potential to retreat. You have Hydras off creep with no cover, with no speed. And what you're doing 
is you're putting yourself in a situation where you're forcing a fight to happen in a way where you're probably going to take a dec- uh, like a shitty trade now. Here's what here's how I think you should have done this, okay? This is what I think you should have done. I and this is unique to the situation that you're in. Because you made because you have hydras without speed. The best way you could have done this if you're going to make if you're going to make pure hydras like this. I don't mind that you made pure hydras. But you should have been a little bit more I like that you're being aggressive, but you should have been a little bit more cautious about your aggression because you don't have speed. Okay? That's the only reason why I'm saying this. I'm going to tell you one of two things that's going to happen. One is you're not going to micro at all because you're committed now. You really can't micro at all because you committed this far in. You you oh, you have ex- done the what we like to call overextended uh, because you just rushed in before your reinforcements are going to get here to help you. And this guy is going to kill your entire army here. He's not going to lose his immortals. He's only going to lose he, he's only going to lose his turds. <laughs> all of his turds are going to die. All right. He's going to lose all that shit he just took once again. And all your hydras are going to die. I bet I'm not going to like I'm not even I haven't even seen this fight yet, but I bet one immortal dies if that and all all of his gateway units die and all of your hydras die. What you should have done is you should have had your hydras kind of like out here, like here and here and only grabbed like five, just like five, five, five hydras. And you had five hydras walk up the ramp and go poke the nexus. And be like, hey, it's like fishing. Come chase me. Come on, no, come over here. Come on. Get me. Yeah. Your hydras are wiggling their asses at him. Come here. And then if he's like, got him. And he runs down the ramp into a bigger concave for you. Not only does that bait him into a fight that is further away from charge lot re- or from reinforcements, but it also is closer to your creep, which is closer to your reinforcements that are currently going to be coming across the map. It gives you a chance to actually be able to kite him because you're closer to creep. Now let's watch what happens because you this is overextending in my opinion. I like that you're aggressive, but it's too aggressive because you have no front line. If you had 10 roaches here, this would have been fine. You have no fucking roaches here. You can't run away from this with slow hydras. Well, you, you, you can if you... So, if you kited, if you actually tried to take a trade and you were like stutter stepping backwards, kill, run, kill, run, kill, run, you would have lost every hydra and killed a little bit more than what you killed. But if you, if you just literally go, fuck it, boys, you're dead. Hydra's in the front. Get out of there. It's like throwing your friends to zombies. Just throw him. He's, he's fucking dead already. Get him out. He'll die. He'll buy time. That's what successfully happened there. You just overextended and lost about, you killed like maybe four zealots to start the fight. And then you're like, this is bad. And you lost like another 12 hydras before you got out of there. So, you know, fuck. Can you realize my marriage like this? I think my wife and I would fight less. I could try. What's up, Gecko? But that was successfully a overextension. I liked the idea, but you you did it a little too over eagerly. You did it before the upgrade was done, before your reinforcements were even close, and ill-advised situation. Like it just was an ill-advised way to do it, for all the reasons we just said. You could totally have kited him and used terrain to your advantage a little bit more. You now have... Okay, gotta pause the game for a second. Let's look at your larva. You have 16 larva. You could spend 15 of that larva in about 2 seconds with 15 more hydras. And I would be totally all for that. I'd be like, you know what, dude? Go for it. But here's what you should do. You have everything going for you right now. If I was watching you and I was your coach... I would actually have hope that you could still win this game. You know what I mean? Like if, if I was like if I was betting on you or something. If I was like, please win this game, dude, I need you to win. There's a chance you still could win. This is how this is how you would want to go about doing it. Okay? This is what you would do. Make hydras right now and fight only on the outsides of the ramp. Do not go into his base. And the way you'd want to do this is you want to make an overseer. You want to make a changeling when you're across the map and you want to see where he is and also have an overseer giving you high ground vision because the changeling could very well die and you poke him. You fucking poke him and you go, hey, come come get me because what is his army? It's mostly zealots. This fucking guy is on this. He's on the brawl brawl squad. Look at this shit. He's got six. Here, wait, is it, yeah, it's all warped in. He's got 16 zealots. He does have a lot of immortals, which is scary. Sure. 
But he has 16 fucking zealots. And you know what happens with zealots when they go fight Zerg? They get a rocket up their ass every time the fight starts and they charge forward. And what you can do, especially if your creep is this good, I like your creep right now. This is, I give this a new seal of good creep, stamp of approval at this point in the game. Good job, dude. You have successfully spread your creep to the edge of your opponent's expansions. It's in the same screen. Creep, expansion. That's fucking good. Kite his ass. Literally, attack, back up, attack, back up, attack, back up, attack, back up. If you fucking stand there and fight his army, what you're doing is you're allowing his immortals to smack you while you have to kill zealots. Remember what I said? Look at the, look at the immortals' move speed. 3.15. Look at a hydra's move speed. 3.94 plus 1.18. This Hydra runs like 60% faster than a fucking Immortal. It runs way uh, on creep, on creep. It runs like only 25% faster than Immortal off creep. Uh, ish. But uh, yeah. Like literally like 55, 60% faster on creep. It's so much fucking faster on creep than an Immortal. So my point is, is you could attack his army, get in range to attack him, which means he'll get in range to charge you. Back up, attack him. Back up, attack him. Back up, attack him. He, you will get all your Hydras to kill all the Zealots because his Zealots will be leading the fight. Meanwhile, his Immortals will go, shoot, walk, 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 shoot, walk, 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 shoot. Instead of being like, pound the fucking Hydras down. Let's see how you do it, man. You got You should be kiting here. If you kited this, you could win this game still. If you don't kite, you will lose. If you run into his fucking base, you will lose. If you fight off creep. Oh my god. I see what's happening. Phew. All right, you better kite. You better fucking kite, dude. Not bad. Not bad. For for being diamond, not bad. I can't really fault you on that. Uh, that was respectable diamond micro. Um, I'm not gonna say it's the best micro I've ever seen, but that for diamond league, that's respectable. You could totally. You could totally manage with this kind of a micro. But there is one more problem. It's your choice of engagement. Moving over here, ill-advised. Really bad. Don't ever do that. You keep I, One thing I notice you do is you keep moving into his base with zero vision. For instance, if, the, if your opponent's army was here when you did that, and he had more sentries, and even Templar now, and you walk your army up this ramp, and he goes, Oh, look at a Zerg! Juicy! Force field, force field, force field. Storm, storm! You're like, well, pfft, game's over. I just lost. Because you didn't know he's fucking there. And you could have just easily lost the game. Or even if he doesn't have sentries, if you just walk into some juicy fucking storms, and now his zealots are charging your hydras down that are all half dead, or even mostly dead, you've once again successfully thrown the game. There's no way you're going to fucking win from there. Scout his ass with, like, changelings before you take actual fights. Because you're putting yourself in a situation where you have a chance to win and you throw it away. And putting yourself over here was really bad because of one major reason. Half your army was correct, half your army is incorrect. You had the right idea of going, kite, micro, kite, micro, avoid storm if I can, pull zealots back, kill them. Good shit. That's good job. But half your army was kiting to the edge of no creep. And half your army is kiting to the edge, or to no edge of creep, to the rest of your creep on the map. This army can kite all day, basically. This army has about a three-second kite timer. Where it's like, oh, boys, we're out of creep. We're dead. And game over. And your, your army over here is going to get shit on. Uh, not saying that this, this amount of hydras is going to win you the game. But this amount of hydras would definitely help. If they were also combined with this. And also combined with your new reinforcements that are going to be made. When you eventually make them. Also, you're not macroing. That's another problem. But, uh, yeah. Like, you need to always be kiting. All, a, B, C. Always, or A, C. It's, it's, kiting is not start with a C. A, B, K. Always be kiting to creep. To more creep. Got your A, B, Ks, dude. And you can only do A, B, Ks if you have creep under you. All right? All right, what? I'm fucking retarded. It is C. I'm so stupid. I'm just, or no. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I'm good. For some reason, I thought, hold on. I was like, always be creeping. That's C. I'm, I, I was right the first time. It's a K. A, B, K. Oh, God. Good God. 
Guys, it's been a long day. All right, give me a fucking second. All right, can we go ahead and delete the last five seconds? <laughs> yeah, it's K. A, B, K. Always be kiting. Okay. I wanted to add it always be cutting and creeping, but you know, that's why I fucked it up. I'm sorry. So I apologize for the last five seconds there. Um, anyways, let's move on. Okay. While well, chat just grills my ass here. So you want to group your hydras all the time and kite as you can on your creep. Okay. That's all you gotta do. Notice how your hydras had nowhere to go, so they all just died. Things like that are, once again, it's it's like little things that lose you the game. You just sacrificed a chunk of your army, just like you were sacrificing drones earlier to make roaches. All these little things, they add up, which successfully has thrown this game for you. So what do we see? We see a Protoss here with the ability to storm you a couple times. You gotta be very careful about that. But he doesn't have a lot of zealots. No matter what, if you're up against storm, you have to spread your units. With mass hydras, you have to spread your units. If you don't, you're going to run through storms and die. It's harder. You're playing this game kind of like I do, because you're going into a hive. You don't really, you're not really going spire. You're going lurkers. But you are going... Um, there we go. You're not really playing with me. Finally, you're going lurker now. And let's take one quick look one more time, really fast. I'm going to hit income. This is still a problem. And once again, let me explain this problem. I'm going to elaborate further on the previous notions of what we explained a minute ago, or like 25 minutes ago, however long this fucking replay has been. Earlier, when we talked about your, um, your, your worker management, and we were like, dude, you should, uh, the golden rule of Zerg is try to be one base above your opponent, right? You want to be one base above your opponent, ideally. Up to three bases. This only applies to early game. This applies to your first ability to max out if it's an aggressive game. If it's an aggressive game. But at this point now, when your opponent is on three bases, you should be on four bases, or, which means your drone count should be like 80. 80-ish. It doesn't have to be exactly four bases mining. It could be five bases mining or six bases mining with about 80 drones spread across them. But 88 drones is the exact number of four base economy because it's 22 per base. And but it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but roughly around 80 would be great. 80, 85, 88. Any of these would be acceptable. 64 is not. Because here's why. Three base economy is good for Zerg to max out and max out and max out on layer tech units. You can remax all day on layer tech units. But you're going to run into a problem against Protoss and against Terran when Tier 2 Zerg starts becoming shittier than Tier 2 Terran and Protoss. There are too many hard counters in Legacy of the Void, realistically, to make Tier 2 work on average. You have to be really fucking good at Zerg to make Tier 2 work if you're on equal economies. Like, we're talking like you have to take, like, for instance... You have to take fights like the one I just talked about. Split second decisions where you're like, run into the main, run into the natural, circumvent his base, run into the third, kill his probes. You have to be able to make decisions like that all the time to be able to make layer work on equal economies. If you're just going for army versus army, just smash engagements over and over like, oh my go, it's two fucking rams just smashing each other's heads over and over. Which one's going to fall over first? You need better economy than this. Because all you can do at this point is go Hydras, dead. Hydras, dead. Hydras, dead. And Hydras are going to expire really quickly against Archon Immortal and Storm. Lurkers are a nice addition, but those can also die really easily. If he has... How many Immortals does he have? He has 12 fucking Immortals right now on the map. If he has an Observer and 12 Immortals, your Lurkers can die so fast. Just so you guys know. One more time, I'll, I'll pause it. A plus two, or a plus three weapon immortal. Four shots a lurker. So if you have twelve immortals, and the lurkers are kind of like staggered a little bit, and two immortals at a time are smashing lurkers, a lurker will die every two seconds. 
because an immortal hits every second. And if you have two immortals, or like if like two immortals are hitting, two immortals kill a lurker every second is what I'm trying to say. And if you have like six lurkers and six lurkers, and it dies fucking fast is my point. It goes, it gets deleted pretty fucking quick. So even lurkers right now are kind of scary for you. Watch how fast these lurkers die. It's gonna, it's, it's, seriously. Okay, so it's kind of like hesitant engagements. Protoss is maxed out. You are not. And it's because... Uh, it's literally because of resources lost. You've taken a lot more than him, and you have equal supply. That you have equal economies to him, but you're you're gonna take resources lost uh, over him if you don't if you break the rule I talked about earlier. Again, I'm gonna say this one more time because it's so fucking important. If you have equal supply to your opponent, and you're always looking for fights against his army, you are almost always going to lose those fights in the end. And the fight over here with the roaches and the force fields is the exact example of that as to why this game for Mr. Muffin here is having uh, problems and struggling. That's what it looks like when you have a lot of immortals. And Storm. This army has success. This is now what you like to call a death ball of ground. Remember how I talked about he had a lot of turds earlier? Earlier he only had like three immortals accompanied with all these units of gateway. Now it's like 13 immortals accompanied with this many gateway units. The gateway unit count never really changed. It just kept slowly getting replaced into more immortal. It w literally, it would not have mattered where his lurkers were. He was fucked. It doesn't matter where his lurkers were. He doesn't have enough supply. It's a, it, This game is an economy problem. There's a lot of players out there that want to break down StarCraft in so many different ways, being like, it was a micro mistake, it was this, it was that. It's because he didn't have enough economy, and with the economy he had, he chose bad fights. He had the wrong idea. He he had the idea of a uh, of a um, of a trade based zerg with an all in economy, which is never a winning combo. It's a bad combo. If you're gonna play uh, an all in based economy, you need to fucking all in because you need to kill him early. But he's not trying to all in; he's trying to macro, which is totally fine. I I understand. It's just that's literally what happened. This is an all in economy with a trade based style. A trade-based style is a way better economy than what we just saw, which is why the Zerg struggled here. To uh, like The Zerg had a lot of advantages here in terms of what looked like advantages, but it's because he was playing conservative, because he was playing trade-based. He wasn't playing all-in-based, which is why it was. it's like misleading to be like, oh, the Zerg should have attacked. Well, he wasn't trying to play all-in. He was trying to play conservative. It's, it's totally understandable. He was, he was paranoid about the guy's opener from the get-go being like, this guy's fucking aggressive. But it's just a misread, and I feel like it all boils down to everything we already talked about. There's so many steps to the game. Number one, first and foremost, you feel like you have to be conservative, and you have this weird, shitty situation you're stuck in that you can't... You get this... Every StarCraft player has been here, okay? Where you're like, fuck, I'm in a bad spot, and I don't really feel like there's much else I could have uh, done to prevent this from happening. It just fucking happened. Like, I'm here, I gotta deal with it. And you try to play get, getting out of it. You're like, oh, this sucks, but I gotta deal with it. That 100% comes down to scouting. And scouting can be indirect. It doesn't have to be... Scouting is... Two, there are two forms of scouting for Zerg. One is what you see. And one is what you don't see. Okay? Let me blow your mind for a second. You are successfully scouting when you are creep spreading. Okay? You want to know why? It's because scouting with your creep, if you're really good at doing it and keeping up to keeping tabs on it, is because... If you don't see something pushing across your your creep, you've successfully fucking scouted that you're safe. Successfully. You don't see an army killing you because you have successfully spread your creep. It doesn't. Scouting is not only I gotta see if he has a robo or a stargate in his main base. Does he have a natural? Yes, that's also important. That is effective scouting in his base. 
But scouting more and more and more of the map is also important, and a lot of people neglect the shit out of their creep so much. Because, and then you, then that's when you get in the situation where you're like, I don't know if I'm safe or not, because I'm fogged out of everywhere. Because then you don't know anything, because you're, then it's just blackness. <laughs> 